Hi, everyone. It's Steve, and welcome to Sens Nation. Today, we're talking about the nightmarish start for the Ottawa Senators. I'm not just talking about on-ice performance or off-ice decisions. I'm talking about the seriously, seriously bad luck that this team has been having. It's probably appropriate as I record this. It is a very gloomy, gloomy Saturday. Um, we're at the unlucky 13-game mark as well. And that's been the hallmark of this season so far. Bad decisions, bad performances, bad luck. Remember, we all raised an eyebrow when GM Pierre Dorian about a month and a half ago said the rebuild is over. We all kind of raised an eyebrow, two eyebrows. But come on, the rebuild is over. Let's put that in perspective. It's a little bit like building an Ikea shelf. And when you're done with it, it's kind of crooked. It's not very level. You've got an extra piece. There's a piece missing. And there's about 14 screws left over. You don't know what they're for. Turns out that's basically Pierre Dorian sitting there with an Allen wrench and the instructions basically going, I hope I built this thing right. I mean, fans had hope in the final month last year going 9-1-2 and two in that last month. And they started this year 2-1. and one. And then against San Jose, things began to unravel. That was the night Brady Kachuk made his season debut. And then Shane Pinto ran his healthy shoulder into the end boards. And you know how it goes when Pintos bump into things. Since then, the Sens have one win and nine losses. And maybe it's a coincidence, maybe not. But since April of this year, the Sens are 11-2-1 with Shane Pinto in the lineup. So they're awfully glad to have him back on Saturday night. But for the rebuild to be over, everything had to go absolutely right this year. The youth had to be way more ready for prime time with more scoring and more attention to detail on defense. The veteran signings had to be better than last year's veteran signings. And DJ Smith needed to have the best players available to him playing in the NHL. Well, as it stands, they're alone in 31st place right now, near the bottom in goals, near the bottom in goals against. And guys like Batherson and Norris have taken steps forward offensively. Guys like Tim Stutzla and Thomas Shabbat, they've taken steps backwards offensively at this stage of the game. Keep in mind, it's early, of course. The D-zone awareness has been shaky with both the vets and the kids, and the Sens continue to struggle with with the evaluation of NHL readiness. Eric Brandstrom, Philip Gustafson, and now Lassie Thompson all down in the minors. They shouldn't be in the minors because their contracts make them easy to send down, and they, they all appear to be considerably better than the vets here in a small sample size. So everything has not gone right. They're 3-9-1 behind the Habs, who lost all their momentum after the cup final run. They're behind scandal-plagued Chicago, a team that fired their head coach because their start was so bad. And they're behind Seattle, which didn't exist a month ago. But it's early, 69 games to go, still time to find their way. For example, L.A., is uh, is trying to emerge from a rebuild, and they were junk to start the year at 1-5-1, and, and they're on a seven-game heater as I record this. But in the Sens' case, and maybe proof that the CTC was built on an ancient burial ground, um, they have absolutely no luck at all. They've had at least four games where they lost, and it was puck luck that took them down, but nothing compares to the misfortune right now on the health front. Between injuries and COVID protocol, they're only missing Colin White, Clark Bishop, Angus Crookshank, then an injury to Shane Pinto, and then COVID hit, taking out Connor Brown, Alex Formanton, Matt Murray, Austin Watson, Victor Mete, Nick Holden, Dylan Gambrell, and Josh Brown. Nikita Zaitsev as well, but he's now ready to return to the lineup. And in the LA game, Artem Zub got hurt. Looks like he's going to be back in short order. Eric Brandstrom got hurt as well. Uh, He's going to be out two months with a broken hand. He apparently found Bobby Ryan's gloves in storage and decided to try them out. So that's all it is. They've had only two American road trips separated by 19 months and somehow came back with COVID outbreaks from both of them. Hey, fellas, where are we going to dinner after the game? Want to go lick the sneeze guard at Applebee's? Anyway, the Senators put up valiant efforts, particularly given the circumstances in games in Boston and against L.A. this week. They'll get Pittsburgh on Saturday night, and with vaccinations, the Sens should quickly get COVID behind them. Pinto is back in the lineup against the Penguins on Saturday. 
Hopefully the net now belongs to Philip Gustafson for the foreseeable future, so I am not writing off the season just yet. Are you? I'd love to hear your comments below on what you think is going to happen with the Ottawa Senators down the stretch here. Get a hold of me on our website, SendsNationHockey.com, and thank you for watching.